Hello everyone, that manga kid here to give my series review of Moto Hagio's The Poe Clan. This is a Fantagraphics release, which if like me, you bought the first one and pre-ordered it when it originally came out, and then you were waiting for an eternity for the second volume to even be announced, uh, this is a joyous day. So... Obviously, the pandemic had a huge impact on particular on publishing in general, but particularly kind of smaller publishers like Fantagraphics. And, you know, we went a good few years there without uh, this second volume. And I was getting honestly a little worried that we were never going to get it. So when it was announced uh, and I was able to pre-order it, I was very excited. And when it showed up, I read it relatively quickly. Um, this, these are giant and these are gorgeous. This is like imprinted, like the, the words are like indented in, um, the spines are really great. The back is great. These are so heavy. Uh, these are huge books. Like that's my hand. This is large. Um, they're beautiful, beautiful releases as per usual with fanographics, but uh, yeah, the Poe clan. Um, Moto Hagio, I believe by the time I bought the first volume of the Poe clan, I think I already had and had read Otherworld Barbara, though I could be wrong. Uh, to date, I own and have read Otherworld Barbara. I also have Lileo, which is a Denpa release, single volume, um, and then the Poe clan. I don't think I own anything else by Moto Hagio, um, because I missed a lot of those other releases like Heart of, Th Heart of Thomas um, and Drunken Dream and Other Stories. Unfortunately, I really want that one. Um, I think it was reprinted recently, but I couldn't get my hands on it still. So anyway, Moto Hagio has a very kind of like whimsical art style and storytelling it's very dramatic it's very um old timey i mean this was written i believe in like the 70s um but it's very like it's very dramatic it's very you know shocked expressions and beautiful flowery moments and and all that kind of stuff and our main character is edgar uh and he is a vamp vampirella, I think is what they call them. Um, he's with his his family, uh, and they kind of travel around, and the story bounces around between timelines because they live for all eternity. Um, you know, it will bounce around between we're in this specific timeline right now, and we're at this specific boarding school or whatever. Um, in this town and then all of a sudden it'll jump like 60 years into the past and now we're experiencing a different moment and then it will jump like 80 years into the future and we're in a different timeline now um none of these are kind of it's it's not a uh like concurrent sort of flowing story a chronological story uh it just kind of jumps around and goes where it wants to um and that's i believe how it was originally published like she just kind of would put a chapter out there and then the next chapter is a completely different timeline and then the next one is just a different timeline completely as well like it, it they live for eternity so why does their story have to exist chronologically <laughs> um you know it, yeah so it, it's a lot of fun i think that you know it, it does have leave some stuff to be desired if you're looking for something that's really straightforward and um you know specifically like story driven i don't know it's kind of anecdotal or not anecdotal it's like um episodic uh but the stories do interconnect in some ways of like you know there will be reference to certain characters or certain events that happened in the past like you'll have read a random story in this one and then in that volume it will kind of reference something that happened previously that you're like oh i remember reading that one um so it's not completely isolated incidents or anything, but uh, 
yeah, we just kind of follow these little vamp- Vampirella children um, and the world kind of reacting to their existence, not knowing what they actually are, but you know, knowing that there's something sort of off about these individuals, particularly when multiple generations of people know of these people, of these individuals, um, and know of them as they exist as children. And they're like, how do the, how do you know them in the same state that I know them when I met them 50 years ago? Um, yeah. So there's a bit of like mystery to that. And, but for the most part, it's very just whimsical, like tales of, of despair in some cases, but you know, beauty and love in other cases. Um, there's a bit of a BL element as as there is with a lot of Motohagyo works. Uh, there's another character named Alan, um, and Edgar and Alan have a sort of interesting dynamic and relationship. Uh, but yeah, there's not really too much to say about this. I don't really know how to explain this. Um, Cause a lot of the time I'm reading it going, I don't know what I'm reading. I really don't know, <laughs> but I like it. I enjoy it. These are beautiful releases. Like I said, they're definitely worth it. I'm you know, mad at myself that I missed a lot of the other releases of, of uh, Motohagyo's works in English. But uh, at this point, anything that is released, I will get, I believe they were 11 is coming soon. Uh, and I'm excited for that. But yeah, I'm excited we're getting some of these more classic shoujo works because these are the things that really set the groundwork for all of the stuff that we have today. And I think it's important from a historical perspective to make these available to English audiences and so that we know kind of where all of the stuff that we read today came from. Um, And yeah, I'm glad that it got like a nice, beautiful release like this. So yeah, if you've read this, I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you have any suggestions of things that are similar or, you know, things that you just think I should check out, uh, please let me know. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.